Good morning, good morning. Tuesday, March the 28th. It's a little bit of a cloudy, cooler day. Not much sun coming out, but it's a God-given day. Thank you, Lord, thank you. If you remember yesterday, in the good book in Luke, chapter 4, um, we finished at uh, verse 30, and Jesus passed his way through the midst of them and went his way. They couldn't throw him off the cliff. So we continue now. Chapter 4, King James Bible, Book of Luke, Chapter 4, 31 to 44. Not too long, a shorty today. And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. And they were all amazed. I've got chills. They were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. The devils came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert, desert place. And the people sought him and came unto him, and stayed him that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. And he preached in the synagogues of Galilee. Oh, it's just exciting, isn't it? I don't know. I, I got chills. I got chills. Have you noticed, even the demons know who he was. They knew who he was. They said, thou art the Holy One of God. The demons knew it. See, it's not enough for us to know who Jesus was. We have to believe that he is our Lord and Savior and forgiver of sins and give our heart to him entirely. Oh, that's just powerful stuff. That is powerful stuff to have in your life, to know that. In the spiritual world, it's a different world to the one we live in, but it interacts with us in many, many ways. God can send us signs to say, look, I want you to know I'm in your life. I want you to know I'm there. He can also send you tests, tests of your strength, tests of your ability, tests of your faith. But he will never allow you to be tested then in a way that you can't cope with. He never will allow you to be tested beyond your ability to cope. And note also that he will give you extra strength and ability. But that test will make you stronger. You will be proved in the fire and come out stronger. And Lord, we are being tested in many ways now. There's been shootings. And innocent people have died. Children. 
And people are going to question God. You know, they're, they're going to question God. And we have to realize this is an evil world we live in. Not the created world, but the spiritual bad part of this world is evil. And it is getting strong. And we're getting close to the end days. This is the world of the end. And things are going to happen that are going to be bad. But remember this, that this life, we are on a journey. And our journey may be long or may be short, but the ultimate goal of that journey is to be in heaven with Jesus Christ, to be co-heirs to the kingdom of God. This down here is transient. We're aliens in this world. No matter what happens in this world, no matter what we're tested with, no matter what comes our way, how devastating it may be, how cruel and heartbreaking it may be, or how insignificant it may be and quiet and almost unnoticeable and undetectable. In every way, God is working with us. He's either saying, look, I'm in your life. He knows how to grab your attention. He knows how to bring you to your knees when you start going astray. Because once he's laid his hands on you and said, you are mine, when you say to him, when you say to Jesus Christ, I give it all up to you, Lord. I give it all up to you because of what you did on the cross that day. And I believe that you died to save me from my sins. And you rose again on the third day to beat Satan because you have overcome this world. When you believe in that, and when you say, yes, God, you got my attention. You're not going to let me go. Now, I've been through some terrible things. And God has been there with me, and I didn't realize it. How much more better is it when you realize that God is with you? How much easier is that journey? How much less is that pain? For children that die, yes, we can say it's tragic. Oh, they had a life ahead of them, a beautiful life to marry and have children of their own. and to... We don't know what was in store for those children. Only God knows because he's in the future past and the present and we're all going to die our days are numbered by him it is written our days are numbered he is in control so when you say oh that poor little soul that poor child is dead now that baby is dead I <sighs> my son Luke who miscarried at seven months Never got to hold him in my arms. Never got to hold him. That was over 40 years ago. But he's with Jesus Christ all this time. And you think about it. All of the rough stuff that we've gone through in life in the last 40, 50, 65, 67 years old I am now. Think of all the bad things you've been through. And my little Luke, he's been with God the whole time. No, don't let the bad things of this world take you away from God or lose your belief in him. I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. Not the kingdom of Satan, not the kingdom of the world. The kingdom of God is what we're aiming for. So no matter what's going on in your life today, no matter what is happening, no matter how impossible, no matter how unbearable it may be, whether it's pain, whether it's suffering, whether it's physical, mental, financial, anything, it's all transient. It's all going to be gone. It will all be a faded, distant memory.
You say, well, fine, what do I do right now? And you just get down on your knees and you say, Lord God, Heavenly Father, I offer it all up to you because I am incapable. The answer to these things is beyond my knowledge, is beyond my ability. It is only in your hands that there will ever be a solution. It is only in your hands that I will find peace. It is only in your hands that I will find eternal salvation. So forget these things. They're just, wash them off. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you for it is easy. Don't bear the yoke of the world upon you. Don't bear the yoke of the world upon you. Get down on your knees. Get down and have your own personal revival. I said it yesterday, PK echoed it this morning in depth and he explained it further. Have your own personal revival every single day in the word of God. Thank you, PK, for saying that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because every single day we will fail and every single day we need that revival. We need that strength building in us. Every single day we need to train to win this race, this long race of endurance. Run it to win, train to win the ultimate prize, the kingdom of God. He loves us. He loves you. He loves you and you and you and you and you and you and you. You get the meaning? You understand what I'm saying? He loves us all. There's no discrimination. Even the person that's maybe causing you hurt, he loves that person. So pray for that person. Don't just be whiny and wimpy and pray for yourself. Oh, Lord, help me, help me, help me. Pray for that person that's causing the affliction because that person needs to go to heaven as well. When God can see that you are doing his work and loving his neighbor, no matter who that neighbor is, no matter who that person is, God will hear your prayers because you are now righteous through his righteousness. Not We're not righteous in ourselves, but God will hear a righteous man's prayer. It says so in the Bible. It is written. We are not righteous by ourselves. No, not one. We are only righteous through Jesus Christ, through him alone. And it is that righteousness that God will see. It is that righteousness. When you start praying for others in the middle of your affliction and you start praying for others, when you start saying, Lord, I'm praying for those people who lost their children, that they have the Holy Spirit descend upon them. There is a great pouring out of the Holy Spirit in the world today. There is a great pouring out of the Holy Spirit. It is happening. It is being made manifest. These, this is the world of the end. The Spirit is being poured out on the world. I have no doubt about it. It's happening. Pray for the Spirit to be poured out upon those people who are in need of prayer and love and consolation. So that they know they're not alone so that they know their loved ones are being taken care of right now in heaven. It's so easy to be selfish, isn't it? Oh, how many times I've been selfish. And just thought of myself all the time, just thought of myself, my own, what I want, what I need. Me, 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 me. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of my selfishness. And I don't think I'm entirely there yet. But I'm getting there. That is the sanctification process. Paul said we are sanctified through Jesus Christ who died on the cross. Yes, we are. But there is another sanctification process. Where we have our own ultimate sanctification when we enter into the kingdom of heaven. Stay in the word. Stay in the word of God. He is the comforter. He is the helper. 
the Holy Spirit. Because God loves you. And I love you too. I truly do. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for watching. Have a great day now. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.